Hey, good evening everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. Let's see what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk about sewing with knits and we're going to make a basic t-shirt, just a plain ordinary t-shirt. And we're going to talk about fitting issues and making sure that your pattern fits you uh, for, before you cut it, what types of fabric to use, uh, basically how to get started with sewing with knits. So the patterns that I like to use, and this series is going to be good for really any t-shirt pattern. You want to pick a basic one that you like all the time, just so that it's easier for you to change. So what I use is the Fit Nice system by Judy Kessinger, and here is them. And I, it's a master top, and you can make all different kinds of things out of it. Um, and actually what that t-shirt pattern is, is it becomes your sloper so that you can draft other things. Um, it's pretty much all I use these days. And she's written two books. This is Judy, uh, there's Judy Kessinger right there. And I'm a, I'm a fit nice Judy Kessinger instructor. I went to uh, Kansas City for training for a whole week to teach her method of, of pattern drafting. I've pattern drafted before. I learned how to pattern draft from my mom. I've also taken classes at G Street Fabrics and there were some places in, in North Carolina when I was a costume designer that I learned flat pattern drafting. And yes, I can do it. Do I like it? No, I hate it. I also had the Luderlo uh, pattern system, if you remember that, and I think it's still in the books over there because I like to look through it for ideas. And I also, for a long time, used Pattern Master Boutique, which was software that you could use to print out your patterns on a, uh, on a regular printer with regular paper. So, yes, I have done all that. I can also drape. That's why I have my... God, I wish I looked like that. I used to. A long time ago. <laughs> so, not anymore. I use it mostly for, like, no, I don't very often. I'll hang things to just to stand back and see how they look. Although I have to expand it way out. And she's got that in the So, anyway, it helps the front or the back. This is right now set for one of my dancers. In fact, she's a lot thinner than the show. And she's also very flat. <laughs> So yeah, so it needs to be expanded when I go to do garment sewing for me because yeah, I'm not that size anymore. <laughs> so, so it is nice to have one. Uh, but some, I mean, she's got Judy's got a book out called Design It Yourself, a workbook that shows literally all types of dresses and patterns that you can use, that you can turn your basic pattern into it. This basic pattern can also be used for wovens with some a little bit of a modification. Oddly enough, the biggest thing is either putting in a princess seam and fitting it. Um, and a lot of times, patterns that they have that they make for woven are actually made with more ease. The biggest difference why people like to uh, sew with knits is because it's comfortable. Um, long are the days do I make clothes so that I can stand in one place and not move because you won't get any wrinkles you will look perfectly good if you just stand in one place and never move well we don't live like that anymore and once you hit 60 you don't ever want to live like that again I live for comfort <laughs> I don't care so I, I'm gone back to knits. I used to take the old stretch and sew if you remember those old in the old days in the 70s so uh, for a while there, I was also a stretch and sew instructor a long, long time ago, <laughs> back in North Carolina when we lived there. But you can, ch but by just changing your seam lines and your uh, necklines and your sleeves and even the pants, and really, there's not a whole lot of changes you make even to a pants pattern. But the reason that I buy, I like to make my clothes is because a, I'm not one size. A single size and I don't think very many people are so uh, and patterns and ready-made clothes are made for these unrealistic people sort of like the Barbie doll that is you know they, they think they said if a person really had the proportional measurements of a Barbie doll her back would be broken in like a week <laughs> so, 
So yeah, no, we're not going to, we don't live like that. We're not shaped like that. None of us fit any pattern. Not even when you buy the pattern, Simplicity, Berta, Vogue, Butterick, all those, McCall's, all those, none of them fit anybody. And that was my, and you would keep buying patterns over and over and over again, hoping we'll find the perfect pattern when we never have. <laughs> there is no basic, and there is no perfect pattern. So you have to, even if you do regular patterns, you don't have to have the fat, fit nice system. It's just a good system of getting a good sloper, and then you will, as you get your skills up, you learn to change it into a jacket, a blouse, a woven blouse, a, a coat, you can do a dress, pretty much anything you can do with once you have a basic sloper. And so what we're going to work on is a basic knit sloper. You can't take a, wo a pattern made for woven and make it into a knit. You can the other way around because knits are have stretch and wovens don't. Um, most of your pattern makers will go to well, well designed for woven because there's more ease, there's more looseness in a, in a woven pattern made for woven than there is for knits. Because a woven is a woven, the fabric doesn't really move unless it's on the bias. It doesn't really move. Well, a knit does. It has side stretch, it has vertical stretch. And some have a lot of stretch. Have all, some almost have no stretch at all. So some of them are almost like a woven. And also, uh, you when you're a beginning sewer, I actually recommend that you start with a knit because you don't have as many fitting problems because it stretches. And therefore, you don't have... I hate darts. They never are in the right spot. Not even with the pattern drafting software. They're never in the right spot. Well, most knits don't have darts, although you could put darts in there. Okay, so anyway, here's my master top, and it's showing you with three different versions, different things you can do. Okay, uh, other things that you sort of need. Well, let's talk about fabrics before we start talking about drafting a pattern. Fabrics are so different, and, we, and I've got some fabrics here. I'm going to scoot this closer. I have some different fabrics here that are all knits, okay? You want to pick a good quality knit. A cheap knit is going to give you problems. Uh, I recommend when you're new, start with something that has some cotton in it, maybe a cotton blend. Don't stick with the viscous rams, okay, because that's a nightmare. Okay, here was a cheap fabric, and it was really cute. See, it's got glitter, which you know I love, but this one has, let me find the edge, uh, has nearly no stretch, and it's got, like, this is going from selvage to selvage. It really has almost no stretch. So it this almost, I would use a woven pattern for it. Mostly because there's no, ver, no vertical stretch. There is some horizontal, but not a whole lot. And how you want to measure your stretch is like measure, say, six inches. And then, then stretch it to see how big it is. See, this has got virtually no stretch. This is going to cause me problems. If I were to use a straight knit pattern, my straight knit pattern, what is on here? The other thing that makes this not a wonderful knit, and you want to be careful of knits. How you tell, well, how you tell the front side of a knit, especially when both sides are the same, is when you take the selvage edge and you stretch it. It's going to curl towards the wrong side on this cheap stuff. See that rolling? See how that curls and it doesn't uncurl nicely? If you are shopping for a knit and you take that stretch grain and you stretch it and it stays like that, put it back. You won't like it. It's awful. This will be a real pain in the neck to sew with because every time you sew, it'll probably sew fine when you're going 
again, you know, on the, along the salvage edge or on the this edge, it'll probably go fine. When you're trying to hem it or do the collar or the or the neckline, it's going to stretch like the devil. And this was this is a pain in the neck. So yeah, I'm probably not going to do anything with it other than I keep all fabric because I just do. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably make like a. Also, this has got a velvet nap to it, which is really annoying to wear. And it has no stretch, and it's very uncomfortable. I made it once in red, and I don't like it. In fact, I don't even have it anymore. Okay? This one is a good one to start with. Now, this is one of my favorite fabrics. It's just a ponte knit, which is a fairly heavy-duty knit. The other reason I'm making fabric, have you seen what they make fabric out of the store now, that horrible stuff? It's so thin, it's like tissue paper. You can see right through it. I like something that has a little substance to it. This is made by Vogue Fabrics. This I got from Vogue Fabrics, which I was highly upset that they were not at the expo this year. But this has got, um, and I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to make out of it yet. I've made the, I had the black and the white, the black with the white stripe, and I, you'll see me wear that from time to time. Okay, now this is my salvage edge, and it's got quite a bit of stretch. This edge it also has quite a bit of stretch. It's a comfortable stretch. It's not overly, it's not a lycra, it's not, but it's a very nice vice ponte knit. And notice as I stretch it, actually a double knit, which is what this is. And a double knit is a good one to start with. A, a single knit usually will roll to the back. A double knit when you, well, when I curl, okay, curl it. Stretch the, get the stretchy end. And I'm going to, and it instead curls towards the right side. And it returns to straight. This is a really good quality knit. And I love it. And it was from Vogue. And this one is actually viscous, which is like a rayon and polyester with 5% spandex. Look for that spandex when you're looking for knits because they will, they will, uh, they're just nicer to work with. They fit better so you can get better fit with it. Okay. So I'll put that over there. I haven't decided what I want to do for this class. So this is another one that I like. Now this is called an ITY knit. And there's lots of ITY knits out there. And there's different ITY knits made of different fibers. Some of them have, are heavier. Some are thinner. Um, if you go into the store, we got a whole new bunch of brush knits that are really nice. Those are all ITY knits and they're really nice. And yeah, I need some, but I need to use what I've got. <laughs> okay, and again... This one is got, this one is a lot of, ha, now usually ITYs have quite a bit of spandex in it, or lycra, lycra and spandex are the same thing. So when you stretch it, it's got stretch, there's, where's the salvage edge? Here it is. Okay, here's the salvage, sometimes I have trouble finding the salvage edge. The salvage edge, it has, it's, a, this is what's called a four-way stretch. The, um. When it's got a little bit of stretch crosswise, that's good with a knit, but you'll usually have more stretch or less, a little bit less stretch in the vertical, okay? Most of its stretch is going to go from salvage to salvage or crossways. So I've got a lot of stretch this way, but I still have a lot of stretch this way. When the vertical stretch and the horizontal stretch are about even, that's called a four-way stretch. So... Uh, lycra swimsuit fabric is usually all four-way stretch, but that's really nice. So this is going to give you, four-way stretch gives you a better fit than when you're making garments than a two-way. Mostly because, you know, it molds around everything. <laughs> so it doesn't give you too many ugly drape marks. So I think I'm going to, it's got some bling, I don't know if you can see it, but I think I like this. This would be good for spring. I bought it for dancing, but we haven't had any. We have dancing up at my dance club that we belong to. However, they want you to dance with masks, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> Here's one. Oh, I can't wait. I might make this one this year for Christmas. I love this knit. This is essentially, it's just a two-way knit. It is not 
a very stretchy knit. In fact, it's got very, it has, has a decent amount of stretch. Almost no stretch, selvage to selvage. Very straight. But this would make a really good jacket. And actually, this would make a really good evening dress. Because look at the back of it. It's satin, stretch satin. It's gorgeous. So I think I'm going to make a jack, I'm going to make a blouse where the collar sort of comes on the diagonal in the front, almost like a little half cowl like this. And I think that would look good. And this is so my color. But yes, I love this. This is so luscious. Although, I don't know who's been dripping glitter on me, but I'm covered in glitter now. <laughs> Does it show I like to buy a lot of glittery stuff? Yeah. This is what I'm, go I'm probably going to use for tonight. And this is a simple lycra. And I do like to make blouses out of lycra. And again, this is a absolutely a four-way stretch because look got a lot of stretch this way and I have just as much stretch this way so I'm going to make this now when you're making a blouse out of a four-way stretch it's most likely you're going to make that a little bit shorter than normal you know like usually when you're picking I don't like my blouses to come right to my hip because like yeah I'm short enough I like my uh, I like my most of my blouses to come down just below my hip line and that's where I usually draft my patterns but if I were to wear that throughout the evening it'd probably be down to my, nearly my knees by the end of the evening because they tend to grow both ways so and then it fit when it does that it usually fits tighter around the torso but that's the fabric that I've chosen to make this blouse out of okay and then this one is a sweater knit and I love this I bought a whole lot of it. This was at Vogue Fabrics too. And it was, it, I've got like enough for a jacket and a couple blouses and all kinds of stuff. But it's a beautiful sweater knit. And you, this one definitely has a right and a wrong side. This is the right side. Here's the wrong side. Although you could, no, I like this side. And again, this has, this is a double knit because it's got a little bit of stretch this way. But the majority of it stretches this way. Crosswise. But this is just nice. <laughs> so, so I'm going to make a jacket and a blouse and a, just a tank top to match. So that's what I've got plans for this stuff. Okay. Now let's talk about taking measurements. <laughs> that's the worst part. Um, it helps to have a buddy take measurements with you. Don't try to do it by yourself. It's kind of hard. That's why we're starting Fit Nice Club. Because you can't measure yourself. You can't fit yourself. I can't. And my husband is very good at things. That's not one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I need some extra help to do that. So when you're taking your measurements, you want to take more measurements than you will ever need. In fact, when you're picking a t-shirt pattern, you're going, to you're going to choose the pattern based on the bust because everything else can be fixed, okay? Uh, the bust is your main measurements for, for that. You might want to grab a pencil and paper because you're going to want to write down what you need and then you're going to, have, so I'm going to give you some information when you're taking your, your uh, measurements. So anyway, the first one is your bust and you want to take that across the fullest part of your bust. And where did I put, there it is. Okay, you would take this, you don't want to, Breathe in or suck up. You just want to sit, just stand normally, stand with as best posture you can. Okay, so you're going to take it around the fullest part of your bust here. And you want it not loosely. I don't want to don't stick fingers in here. Don't suck it so tight that you know you're you think you're going to get the measurements you wish you had. Because <laughs> that then it won't fit, and then you're not getting. Don't show them to anybody, you know. <laughs> In fact, if somebody's taking your measurements and you don't want them to see, just tell them to put their thumb on it and then hand it to you, and then you can read your own measurements. <laughs> so, so you take your measurements and then you record the bust, okay? Then you're going to want to take the waist, okay? And the waist, 
there's a lot of different uh, discussions about where your waist is. Well, the waist is usually just above your belly button, literally. Just right on top of it. For most people, not everybody. Believe me, what I'm saying doesn't apply to everybody. So you want to usually take the biggest part of your waist, because some of us are shaped like this. So if you came to your smallest part, you're probably at your hip. That's not the waist. You want to take your waist, and it helps to get a string or a ribbon and tie it around your waist, or a piece of elastic that you put on, and put that waist where you are comfortable, where you like to wear it, where you think is your thinnest part or what is the most important part to you that is comfortable for you, especially when we're talking about fitting pants because that there's your God-given waist and then there's the waist that you're comfortable with and they are not necessarily the same thing. I know they're not on me. My, it says, according to the, the books, my waist is like here, okay? No, my waist is down here. This is where I'm comfortable. So, and I am long-waisted anyway, but you want to put a measurement on because you want to put a, a ribbon on so that you, you keep it there because there's some other measurements we need that, that also talk about that waist. Okay, then you want to take your shoulder. And let's see if I can show you. The shoulder measurement is going move the hair. It's going to be where the bottom where your neck goes this way, that angle, to where you think that it, there's usually like a a bone you can feel on your shoulder, which is the top of your shoulder. So you want to take that measurement. That's your shoulder. Oh wait a minute, take that back. Let's go back to the bust. So when you're writing down whatever your bust is. You want to add one inch to it. Now this is not for fit. This is for pattern drafting. The, 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 I'm going to have two columns. Sort of like, well you can't see this because backwards. This is the measurement. This is what you measured. And then there's ease. Depending on what you want. So these are the true measurements. And this is how we're going to select our pattern. These are what we're going to adjust that pattern to when we need to. Okay. So if you like a close fit, add an inch to that bust. If you like it to be a loose fit, comfortable, super comfortable, go two to four inches bigger than that. Okay. On the waist, same thing. If you want a close fit, add an inch to that waist measurement. If it's, you want a loose fit, add two inches to that waist measurement. Now the shoulder, no ease is ever put into the shoulder. In fact, with a knit, we're going to talk about stabilizing the shoulder seam because with a knit, you're, you're, you know, you have your stretch going this way. Well, what happens, especially if you put the thing on a hanger, which you should never put your knits on a hanger, uh, is the fact that that shoulder is going to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. It does need to be stabilized. Um, and as far as gaining weight and losing weight, almost you lo will lose or gain nearly no weight in the shoulder length. That's, that pretty much stays the same measurement your entire life. And there's no ease. Okay. Then you've got the tummy, which is different than the hip. <laughs> okay. The tummy is going to be like, here's the waist. And here, here's the hip. The hip is always going to be your fullest part. You might want to also draw, you know, put on, no, put a piece of elastic around where your hip is. But the tummy, you have a tummy, well, I have a tummy. I have a big tummy. Some of us, the tummy measurement's bigger than the hip measurement. The hip measurement is going to be the biggest part, like, that goes around your behind, like right, right about where your leg breaks. So, your leg breaks here. This is usually your waist measurement. Tummy is usually a little higher, or could be lower. Depends on, or, you know, <laughs> and some people have a lot, depends on how you're shaped, you know. Some of us, the tummy's bigger than the waist, and, or than the hips, and some of us, there's really, really <laughs> differences. So anyway, uh, for the uh, tummy, 
you want to add again one inch for a close fit or two inches for a loose fit. Now your hip is your fullest part. It usually goes, and the measurement is usually about where your leg breaks, where it breaks the line. That 90 degree angle you can occasionally do. Uh, and that way you, that's your hip. It could be higher, it could be lower, depending on where the fullest, you also want to note the fullest part. Um, and so therefore with the hip, you're going to add one inch for a close fit or three inches for a loose fit. And that's going to be more when we do, do uh, um, pants. Okay, the arm width. Okay, now that's another measurement a lot of us really thin ladies <laughs> need to take. <laughs> and that's going to be the fullest part of the arm. So you would want to measure. Don't do this. <laughs> just, just relax it. Maybe just set it on a table and relax your arm and take that measurement. Because we may need to change something that's around the fullest part of the arm. Some of us, it's up here. Some of it's here. Some of us, it's at the elbow. Thank God I'm not like that yet. <laughs> yet. Okay, uh, so again, if you're doing a sleeve, close fit, fitted sleeve, add one inch to that measurement. If you want a nice loose fit, three inches. Okay, then you want to do across the front. That's about five inches down from your shoulder. And it goes from armhole to armhole. So this helps to have on a shirt or something where the armhole is in the right place. I don't know if you can see this, but mine is not in the right place. I didn't make this blouse. My shoulder should be here. Because that's where it breaks. Okay, that, or that shoulder, there's like a bone here. <laughs> so it's like, okay, this is where it should be. Okay, so you would measure... Five inches down from the neck, from the highest part of the neck, straight across, and you want this measurement, okay? This also will probably never change throughout your lifetime. That probably, no matter how much weight, you might have a quarter inch difference, but, you know, you may not it, throughout your lifetime. So you want to measure that. There is no ease for that. This is a hard, hard measurement. There's blouses, like this one is too wide. And you can tell it's too wide because if I'm standing with my back straight, this is nice and straight, but when it's not, I'm getting these vertical pleats. That says this is too wide. If it was too narrow, you'd see the arms pull in like that. You know, you'd see it pull in, especially on a knit. Now, if that were woven and it's too tight over here, you couldn't move. But with a knit, you can. <laughs> okay, you're going to do the same thing across the back. Again, five down. Now, you have center back. In the center back, you'll feel a bone right here. That is your center back. And that's the not, you want to, not from the top, but from, like, just the bottom of that little bone that you can feel back here. I don't know if you can see that from here. It's about five inches down from the center back. And it goes from armhole to armhole, as you see here. Okay? That is across the back. And then you need to add at least one inch to that. Okay? Because you have to move. Even though a knit has movement in it, it has stretch in it, you still need more than, than normal. You want to be able to do this. If this were a woven and you didn't add any ease, any ease to that back, you wouldn't be able to move your arms forward at all. Okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, then you have your sleeve length. The sleeve length is going to be wherever your natural top is. You will measure it. I can do this. This one's hard to do on your own. Well, I'm not, I'll pretend it's there. Oh, here, I'll just hold it. Just pretend it's right here, okay? <laughs> and you want to run it. You want to put your arms by your side. We'll just pretend that's right there, okay? Run it over the elbow. Stop, measure, stop measuring when you see this bone. Okay, so you want to run through here up to this bone. So again, no, um, there's no ease there. That's pretty much standard. It's not, you, you don't want your sleeves drawing. It's like that sweater I made one time. I knitted a sweater and like 
it was fine. And then the arms, you know, bigger and bigger. And then I could flap them, you know. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Now, um, then you also want to measure that same measurement on where you like. Take that. Set. You want to take three measurements. There's the long sleeve is the one you stop measuring here. You want to stop where you like to wear where you like your shirts to break. I like mine short. I don't like them down here. But and and then sometimes I'm on them really short. A lot of, in this, my summer t-shirts, I usually stop right here. This is a little long for me. I'm not crazy about it. I would take that up another three inches. So I have on my pattern. I have where it breaks, and I, here's my short measurement. Sometimes I like a three-quarter sleeve just below, just above my elbow, so I take that measurement. I almost will never make long sleeves. I hate long sleeves. I, I feel like I'm strangling in them, so I don't like long sleeves. And then again, you're going to want to measure top length, you know, um, how long you want it. This, you need some help, is that like you would take the back, throw it down. Okay. Then you have, you're going to take your measure, the center of your shoulder blade. So say my shoulder blades are right here. Okay, or which is or actually where that, where the bust goes across, you know, where you take, take that bust line. That's about where your center back is, and you want to take a measurement. You can do it two ways. You can take it from here to wherever you like it to end, or you can take it from the top of the shoulder. Usually that's where I've always taken mine. She recommends going the shoulder to the, the length you want it. I go, because I'm a little front heavy, I'm going to take my measurement and go from this center seam up here to where I want this thing to end. And then want to go across the fullest part of the bust, and you're going to measure wherever you like that shirt to finish. I like mine a little long. I don't like to see my butt hanging out from underneath the shirt, so I make mine a little long, which is, sounds really long. I've got 26 inches is where I like them. Of course, I'm adding two inches for the hem. So I want them to break just below my hip, not right at my hip, I want it below. Occasionally I'll even do a long one because I like to make tunics, which go to your knee, so I'll take another measurement and write it down to just the top part of my knee. We used to call them mini skirts. Now they, who knows what they wear. <laughs> Micros were probably what I now call a shirt. <laughs> Back in the day, I wear them so, oh, yeah, I was always in trouble with those skirts. My mother wouldn't let me have them. <laughs> okay, then you write those down because we're going to compare those measurements to your pattern pretty soon. Okay, so, um, again, now speaking of pattern drafting, I have, this is what the pattern looks like. a few here. This is the master tap up top pattern and then this comes out as a big flat piece that you need to trace your master pattern on. And it comes like this. Okay. And usually the front and the back are the same. Okay, and it's got all, a lot of patterns come in all different sizes. Whenever you've got a pattern, and a lot of times they're tissue, a lot of times when they're tissue, I will get contact paper or something, or interfacing, and I will iron it to the back to keep my master pattern. That way I can make changes, or whatever, back and forth, and use that pattern for a long time, but I don't cut this... Even with it's a tissue pattern, I don't cut it up. I take tracing paper, or not tracing paper, pattern paper, and draft a new pattern. And it'll have the sizes, you know, like it'll say here, this is a size 28, yeah, I wish. <laughs> and then it's got all the graduated sizes. And for this one, for the, you want to check those for two measurements. 
you want to compare the pattern with the bust and the hip. Those are the two big things you're going to change offhand. So let's keep this off. And I made my pa I made a master. It looks like this. And it has a little hinge here for whether it's the front or the back. So like see when you open this up. I've written some different things when I've made changes to it. The one that's not cut out is my back. When this is taken away, that's the front. And then really, there's not a whole lot of difference right now. Okay? But we're going to compare things to measurements. Okay? For before. So anyway, trace out the pattern as is. You could use tissue paper. Um... Wrapping paper makes a real good one. Tissue paper is a little distorts real easy. I like to use wrapping paper. And I got a big roll of it. And so I use that. Um, I like to use the pat. Uh, we have it at the store. It's called Pattern Ease, which is what this is. And it, I like this. You can see through it to trace. And you can even sew through it if you have to. Let me find the one. I should have taken that out earlier. This. Here's my master sleeve pattern, and you see how short I make mine. I didn't even bother to draft a long sleeve one because I'm never going to use it. <laughs> if I need a long sleeve, I just simply extend it, and then I work on the, on the fabric. Because you're going to start with the pattern, and actually your real fitting comes when you fit to the fabric, because every fabric in a knit is going to fit differently. So you always start with a basic master pattern and then you're going to make changes my master top aha here we go in fact i you know before i cut this i'm gonna need to like recheck it because i'm not that big anymore oh those are rather nasty measurements oh 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 okay <laughs> but this one is the back and see how shallow that is and i had to make some changes to it in fact, I'm going to have to draw, draft a whole new master. So let's talk about some of these fitting problems first. This is another one that I bought and I haven't used it yet. Is This is called Swedish Drafting Paper. And it's not paper again, it's a pellon. You can also buy, if you have really cheap um, interfacing, on sale, although a lot of interfacing is too narrow for this. This is pretty wide. Okay, so we'll move in. Okay. See, this is really thin. And this is, but the only thing I don't like about that is those lines are very distracting. They were fine when I was flat pattern drafting. I don't do that anymore, so I don't need all these silly lines. So here's what our basic pattern would look like. You would go to your chart, okay? And, like, this is what your pattern would sort of look like. Okay? So, this would be my different sizes here. So, the first thing I would start with is that I would go to your chart, take your bust my measurement, whatever's here, add whatever fit you're like to. I'm going to do the first one I do. I always do a close fit because... You'll know all the problems you have with the pattern. I don't recommend doing your first pattern with a loose fit. You want it as close to your form, your actual form as possible. So let's just say, say you have, <laughs> I'm going to lie, okay? And don't worry about these size numbers. They're just a number, okay? It's just a number. And remember, my, this is my number, but my number is unlisted, so only I know it, <laughs> okay? So let's just say, I have a 34 bust, which I used to, okay? <laughs> See, I have a 34 bust, okay? So that means I'm going to pick the one that is the closest. So probably go with uh, this is a 33 bust here, but say I'm going to go at, at, say I have a 34 bust, I'm going to take 35. I'm probably going to pick and use this size 32, so I would go to my, take, put my tracing paper over this. Okay, and then I'm, going, I'm just going to do it in pencil because the pens will go through this usually. 
And then I'm going to trace out my pattern. But first what I do is I would take my pattern, fold it in half. Because usually they give you a half that say put it on the fold. So you, you would put it on the fold, but take your line. And you want to draw. First thing you draw is your fold. Okay. And then which one would be, I'm just going to guess which one. You would draw the front and the back, the shoulder slope. And I'm just going to say it's the second one, this third one in. I'll draw, trace it out. Okay. And usually I'll write, you know, master, that this is your master or your working copy. And then fold, because you'll forget that's a fold. Okay. Then you're going to go back to your chart. Okay, and there's different things you're going to measure. They're going to just draw some lines on. So I want this line. Your bust is right about here, right underneath the arm's eye. Okay. You have this line. Okay. And usually this one is the same as the back, so it doesn't matter whether it's front or back. And then there's the part of the of the shirt you can see is a is a waistline. So I'm going to draw a line here. And then a draw a line here to here. Oh, this is your I wouldn't say this is a master. This is your working piece. Okay? Now, we need to make some changes to this probably. <laughs> okay. So, what you want to do is because a t-shirt pattern, usually the back and the front are the same, but we rarely are. Okay? <laughs> we rarely are. So, um, if you're sort of normal shaped, which few of us are, you might want to also take where your normal side seam is and take a measurement across from one seam to the other on the front, one seam to the other on the back, if you're di if you're disproportional like me. There are some, some women, and I see them around here every once in a while, not very often, that we call have the shelf, where their derriere comes, there's their waist, and then they come out almost like a shelf. So if you have a problem like that, you need to sort of note you probably, when you have a shelf, the back is usually bigger than the front. Some people, the tummies are bigger and they have a real flat rear end. So take this measurement across your hip on both the front and the back because there could be a problem. But we're going to assume right now we don't have those problems. <laughs> we're going to go into all kinds of problems. We're first going to do the first draft as if we have no problems whatsoever. Let me turn this over so that it's not just distracting. Okay. So, you have your bust measurement. It's 36. Now, this is assuming a one-half inch seam on this particular pattern. This is going to be different for whatever. See, that's one-half inch. Okay. This one, this pattern uses a one-half inch seam for everything. For a knit. Okay, so anyway, um, if you're doing a woven, you're going to usually add to this one half inch seam. When, if you were do, going to use this pattern to do a, a slope or for a woven fabric, because that gives you more, or even a one inch. You can make that seam allowance whatever you want. So anyway, you want to take this measurement between, say your bust is right here between the center and wherever that seam is and divide and multiply it by four. It should be somewhere around this ballpark where it said take your bust measurement and add your ease into it. If it isn't, then you can move your bust, you know, this line wherever you need it. Okay. So if that's the case, say I ended up being a lot bigger busted <laughs> than I thought, <laughs> then I would take this out here because sometimes with your hip now down here's where your hip measurement is 
So the second thing you want, so you would write that down. It either has to go plus or minus, whatever, on the bust. Then you're going to do the same thing for the hip. And the hip is going to be usually about, oh, about five to nine inches below where the waist is. It would be your hip again. Okay, take this measurement. It should, and then multiply it by four. It should be round about whatever you said your waist or your hip is. Say my, I am very flat chested. Uh, well, not, but you know, just say if, okay? <laughs> and, but I'm very big butt, big, 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 big hip, okay? I would have to make a change to this. I would have to come over here and move this in. Say I say I, I had to come down to the to the fit below. Where it go? Right here. Okay. I should have brought colored pencils in here. I didn't bring them in. I don't think I've got any other colors in here either. Okay, say I had to go down one size. I would now redraw this to this next lowest one and stop there. And say I had to go out to the next two sizes for here. So then I could theoretically have a pattern that goes like this. Or actually, usually I'll take it a little more at the waist and bring it in. Okay. I want to take the length too. If you're very short waisted, okay, because this pattern, this is where you're going to, for your short waisted, you, you might want, did I say do a shoulder to waist? No. Okay. If you're short waisted, you would take another measurement down here that goes from the top of the shoulder to this waist. Same way we did the length. Mark where that waist is because if that's the waist needs to be moved up or down, you can either fold it and bring it up or slash it and bring it down. Okay, so this would be like where the waist is. That's another easy measurement to take. To compare this to whatever your shoulder to waist measurement is and see make sure it, it it'll work for you if it's too short I'd rather it's I'd rather have it too long than too short you know because with a t-shirt this is relatively a flat straight line it's not form fitting like a and check this shoulder because this shoulder could be off and if that is the case, if your shoulder is much shorter, as in my case, my, my, I have very narrow shoulders, what I would do is I would slash right here, cut it, okay, if I have to take this shoulder and I would slash to here, adjust this to here in other words move it in or you could just draw it in too but I mean if you're not sure draw that in actually to be honest with you I never slash it I would just mark it and move it up so usually this is what I do is I straighten out this so I have a little less curve on there okay and next I'm going to check since I've checked my shoulder, I'm going to check the front because where this is needs to be in the right place. If it isn't, you need to adjust it accordingly. And a lot of times that's where I'm going to do a slash and twist. Okay. There's a few other adjustments you can go along, but check these measurements, all these parts against your chart and see what you need to do to change it. If you have any problems, email me and we can always set up a Zoom one-on-one -on -one or a face, you know, one-on-one -on -one face talk too. So same thing, you wanna check your arms, arms eye to make sure this length is where you want it. Um, I can tell you that if you buy um, the commercial patterns, Butterick, McCall, Simplicity, Berta, Vogue, all the basic ones, they usually make this too much ease, so we'll probably just be prepared. We're going to take some ease out of that, okay? And then I say, and then next week we'll talk about making changes to the arm.
and also some specific problems such as if you have uh, if you have a hump in the back of your neck they call it a dowager hump what you need to do to change that if you have any of these problems email me or if the arms if on the arm across here if it's not big enough what you need to do to make this bigger and we'll talk about about that or or if your shoulders you know so anyway don't try to sew anything just go ahead and cut and just take your master pattern and start we'll start tweaking it it may take us a while to get through this series because getting this is once you get it once you get that sloper you know there's nothing you can't do there's a site i forgot the name of i saw it online they have these really adorable tunics and shirts and gorgeous stuff and you know, i know if i ordered it, it's never going to fit but i have those pictures and i can once i get my master pattern done then i can go ahead and copy anything i want so anyway does anyone have any questions i know there is a lot to fitting and like I said, first of all, get that sloper. Select some fabric. Don't don't go with that cheap, yucky stuff because a the only thing you're going to learn is how frustrated you can be using it. So get something maybe that has a little bit of lycra in it, or or has a good stretch to it, but isn't one of those cheap, yucky ones that curls and makes a mess. So pick something get working on your pattern and at least select your pattern if you have any questions or about what you're picking feel free to contact me email me or we can even set up a zoom okay have a great week bye